Today we're talking about a sad, angry, and maybe even potentially violent clown. And the new movie he's made that's coming out next week. ka cha 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 Easy joke. So before we go any further, if you like Comic Island, be sure to subscribe to our channel, and you can check out our Patreon page in the video description below. Now, a lot has been made of this movie ever since it premiered in Toronto last month. With Joker only a week away as of writing this script from being widely released across theaters all over the world, it's been in the news a lot lately. One thing that kind of stood out from at least some of the critics that came out of this early screening was that they were a little lukewarm on the whole thing, and a persistent argument that has come up a few times now, even at this point from people who haven't seen the movie, is that Joker the movie is glorifying violence. Now I do have to make something clear, I haven't seen the Joker yet, and I'm not really in a rush to either. I don't particularly care about this movie, and for reasons we're about to get into, I have no faith in it whatsoever. But I'm also pretty confident this film doesn't glorify violence. Of course, whether or not a movie glorifies violence to begin with is very unclear, because that term is vague and not defined specifically. Thus, it is a convenient tool for people to tear things down they don't like. That is to say, I'm confident that the Joker movie has violence in it, <laughs> there, and therefore it's easy for people to write blogs about how violent it is, and somehow that all makes it really bad. It would be no different than someone complaining about the relatively tame levels of violence in most comic book movies and the supposed effect it has on children. This concern about Joker and shootings in the theaters because that's what happened the last time this character was on the big screen seems like more of an American problem rather than a problem with the movie in particular. And just because a movie like Joker has a lot of violence in it doesn't mean it is embracing violence. In fact, I would argue strongly that modern media needs a more intelligent, smarter take on violence. I would like there to be more movies and TV shows like Joker that feature difficult characters that are complicated and at the end of the day, not good people. That's what the whole point of a show like Breaking Bad was, and if the Joker movie wants to do something similar, if DC wants to create a more sophisticated, different kind of comic book movie, that deals with the dangerous and violent protagonist who is, at his core, not a good person, I am all for it. I would love to have another superhero movie that really challenges its audience, like Logan, Super, or even something like Deadpool. These are all movies that didn't follow the typical path of comic book movies, and if the Joker wants to be like that, then I am all for it. And it has that potential. Joker is R-rated, doesn't seem to feature any other major DC characters, and appears to take place entirely outside of the main canon of DCEU films. Say what you will about Warner Brothers, or even the choice to do a solo movie about the Joker to begin with, they've made some pretty brave choices overall when it comes to this movie. It seems very likely to me that these critics are responding to the fact that violence is in the movie, rather than the movie actually espousing how violence is a good thing. Keep in mind we're not talking about a normal audience here, but rather whoever happened to be attending this screening at the Toronto International Film Festival, about as far from the general audience as I think you can get. I seriously doubt we are meant to agree with the Joker, but maybe the movie will make us emphasize with him a little bit, in spite of the fact that he's a dangerous, violent, and bad person. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. To be fair, I did encounter baffling headlines like this one. So maybe whatever this movie does is attracting some sort of violent and insane crowd. Because I've never seen the US Army of all things worried about something like that. And it's a little disconcerting to see headlines about how police are feeling the need to amp up security at certain theaters and locations. But again, feels a lot more like an American problem rather than a Joker problem. Still, I do think there will always be weird people who are just a little too into the Joker for anyone's comfort, and people are going to find excuses if they want to inflict violence on the world regardless of whether or not there's a Joker movie. And that's too bad? It's not the job of Warner Brothers or director Todd Phillips to make sure everybody has the same level of media literacy as everybody else. So I don't really take any stock in the idea or argument that the Joker movie glorifies violence and that makes it bad. I really think this is no different than when uptight Christians use and try and censor movies and TV shows 
for offending their personal sensibilities. And it would be nice if I could end the video here, but it probably would mean that I wouldn't be making this video to begin with. After all, there pretty much hasn't been a comic book movie to come out in some time that someone, somewhere, on some side of the political aisle hasn't tried to twist into some issue. And it's always about equally ridiculous. But we are talking about the Joker today for a reason, and that's because director Todd Phillips decided to do something he never should have done, which was start talking. Things started out okay at first. Todd correctly pointed out that other media, like the John Wick franchise, is chock full of violence and nobody really seems to mind or give it the same flack that the Joker has gotten. He's right about that, by the way, especially considering that John Wick kind of treats violence as a good thing and Joker does not. That isn't to say that John Wick is bad because of its violence, but rather it's a pretty clever way of Todd Phillips pointing out the gaping hypocrisy and selective attention of those complaining about Joker's violence. People are not being consistent with their criticisms, and we are instead responding because of the clickbaity nature of the Joker's character. He's different from John Wick, less predictable, less controlled, and a whole lot scarier, and people are responding to that. That's fine, that's a fine point for the director to make. But then people started pointing out other things Todd Phillips said in the same interview. Mostly just a lot of dismissive rambling about PC culture and how bad outrage is, but Warner Brothers and Todd Phillips both seem shocked that they're getting any kind of scrutiny at all, and that's just naive and stupid of them to have not expected that whatsoever. We're getting to the point where Warner Brothers is barring the press from attending future premieres of this movie, which is just pathetic. But whatever to all of that stuff, Todd Phillips' weird complaint, Warner Brothers' inability to handle tough questions, it's this one quote that really bothers me. <coughs> now, we didn't make the movie to push buttons, Phillips told the rap. I literally described to Joaquin Phoenix at one point in these three months as like, look at this as a way to sneak in the movie in the studio system under the guise of a comic book film. It wasn't, we want to glorify this behavior. It was literally like, let's make a real movie with a real budget and we'll call it Expletive Joker. That's what it was. <sighs> and this is where we have the real problem. First of all, it's weird that Phillips is on one hand trying to claim he's making a real movie while simultaneously claiming that his movie isn't trying to push buttons. It's a contradictory statement where on one hand Phillips is trying to claim that his movie isn't edgy, it isn't pushing any envelopes, and it isn't trying to be meaningfully new or different. But in the same phrase, he's also saying that the Joker is a real movie, with the implication being that other comic mo movies are not. That, in and of itself, is a farce. Is the Joker really going to be as thoughtful or as well put together as, say, the comic book movie Logan? <laughs> Let's talk about Todd Phillips for a moment. Here are some of the movies he has directed. Frat House, Road Trip, Old School, Starsky and Hutch, all three Hangover movies, Due Date, and War Dogs. He has done some other stuff here and there. He wrote Borat, for example, but I don't think that is much to his credit. And it's clear that Todd Phillips has a background in comedy. I think that's a neat idea to give a comedy director a movie like Joker, but I don't like most of these movies. I enjoyed some of them when they came out, like the first Hangover movie, but none of them hold up very well at all today, and not one of these I would consider some earmark of quality that would merit Todd Phillips to consider himself a real movie director when James Gunn, James Mangold, and Matthew Vaughn apparently are not. Todd Phillips is a pretentious asshole saying something like this, and he made it perfectly clear that this is a statement he has repeated many times before in that same quote. He might try and walk this back later, he might try and make this statement into something it isn't, but this is perfectly clear to me that he has the same crappy attitude about comics that a million dinosaurs out there share. Without any regard for the fact that quality storytelling has been done through this medium for decades, and by the way, if we're being really, truly honest, I have a great deal of affection for comic book stories and some of the quality stuff that's been done from that industry compared to the stale and repetitive nature of the American independent film industry as it currently exists. Do you know how similar so many independent films are that I've seen lately 
how many are safe bets that rely on similar plots, similar music, and similar pacing to appease a relatively smaller crowd of film festivals and the Oscar Academy. In comparison, the world of comics is full of ideas and concepts that have never seen the life of day in these independent movies and be far beyond the realm of this older crowd's dismissive, imaginative abilities. What is worse is I can guarantee you that Todd Phillips had this attitude going into this movie and definitely said some sort of variation of this quote to the higher-ups at Warner Brothers and for some reason they still chose to hire him. This isn't some artsy direction with a vision talking down to the rest of the industry, which wouldn't be great but would, would at least be understandable. This is a wannabe frat boy acting like he's better than people vastly out of his league to begin with. And the fact that Warner Brothers is on board with this tells me that they don't respect the comic book industry or the history of these characters any more than Todd Phillips does. This story, all this weird drama around the movie, and Todd Phillips' attitude has effectively killed any enthusiasm I had towards the Joker movie. Look, it might be great, it might be really awesome and fun and a wild ride. I'd, at this point, bet an awful lot of money to the contrary, but it is possible. Anything's possible. But the fact that this director has this kind of attitude towards comic book movies, superheroes, and storytelling in general is the biggest red flag one can get. I don't know about you guys, but I can tell you personally, these comments and all these stories have left me with extremely guarded expectations about this movie. Todd Phillips has no respect for where the character he is making a movie about comes from. Now to be fair, other filmmakers have been like that in the past. Tim Burton didn't seem to respect Batman comics much when he was making those early movies and they were first coming out. But Todd Phillips is no Tim Burton. And all of this is a very, very bad sign for the Joker. The fish rots from the head, my dear viewers, and you shouldn't forget that. I have no way of knowing whether or not the Joker movie will be worth anybody's time. It will probably be weird or mediocre, or if I were a guessing person, probably a lot more like Hangover Part 3 than anybody would prefer. And it really blows my mind that one would ever tap into talent that doesn't respect or even seem to like the thing he is supposed to be adapting. It comes across as bitter, as if Todd Phillips was forced into this position and is just trying to make something that interests him because he can't find work anywhere else. And given his track record, I kinda think he wasn't exactly flush with offers for making other movies. Why Warner Brothers chose to hire this guy to begin with? Well, I have so much trouble imagining why that might be. Let me know if you agree and what you guys think of all this in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to keep reading comics. Someone's gotta.